Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media production. And what we do here is, you know, get into tone, get into sound, get into busting myths and figuring out hacks, things like that. And today we're talking about clear batters on the snare and how it's actually kind of awesome. Now this is a thing that I actually don't do very much um, just because the music that I generally make doesn't call for it, but it is a certain kind of sound. Um, you're gonna recognize it when you hear it. Um, I think of it as a 90s thing a lot and also um, a little bit of a ska or a reggae thing at times. Not necessarily that they were doing this, but it gets that kind of sound. Um, so there's a lot of options here and we're gonna go through a whole bunch of them. Thanks again, of course, to Promark by Diderio for being our presenting sponsor. And we are gonna start off with talking about the fact that there's a lot of clear heads out there or things that are technically not coded, but maybe you also can't see through them. Now we've all probably seen drum sets that have some mixture of coded heads and clear heads on them. And what you tend to see is coded on the snare and then clear on the toms, lots of times clear on the bass drum too, especially if you play pop music, rock music, things like that. And I was surprised to find out that uh, there are a lot of people that actually do clear batters on their snares for really specific reasons um, that are sound oriented. And uh, as you're gonna see today, when you go from single ply to double ply, different kinds of double ply, the sound does change, but there is a clear head, a non-coded kind of fundamental sound. And what it has to do with basically is what happens to a head when you put coating on it sonically. Like what what is the effect of that? Beyond adding mass, you're adding mass specifically to the batter side, which is gonna change how it feels to hit it because there's something in between you and the head itself. And then also it's going to suppress some overtones. It's gonna boost other overtones. It's gonna modify the best possible tuning range for that head on a given drum. Um, it changes the durability, it changes literally everything. But for the most part, we're here to talk about sound. So let's get right down to it. We're gonna start off with a Clear Evans G12, which is the clear version of the coated head that I use all the time for my snare drum. It's kind of my go-to thing. And I have used uh, clear G12s as rezos before. I have used them as batters on my toms before here and there, um, I've literally never put one on a snare drum. And so this is gonna be double fun because this also isn't my snare drum and we haven't used this one at the studio very much. It's a Tama Bubinga uh, and it sounds awesome. It's really great for kind of loud music, which uh, clear snare batters are also kind of awesome for because they cut like crazy. So here we go with the clear G12 on the batter. We have our standard three mil snare side on here. We're doing 20 strand custom pro stainless steel snare wires. And this is a Tama Birch Bubinga snare. Immediately the first thing I notice is that the presence of the overtones is really different and the presence of the, the drum in the kit sound is also different. I don't know if it's in terms of decibels louder, but it feels very loud and it feels very cutting, but also very fat and takes up a lot of space. Um, we were remarking earlier that the close mic sound on this head when we recorded earlier was surprisingly good. Um, and much different than we'd been experiencing with the normal heads that we use here, just in terms of the mic that's right on the drum. And when you're recording a kit, you know, that mic is supplemental. It's not like that's your snare sound, but having that be so great is actually kind of awesome because it gives you more to work with. Secondarily, um, 
the overall brightness of the drum is really coming through. You know, this is already a fairly bright drum. It's already a fairly loud drum. It's got die cast hoops on it. It throws a sound no matter what heads you put on it pretty good. But this definitely makes me think of like when I was way into Primus back in the day or when I think about like sort of like rap metal crossover stuff in the 90s. Um, and also, if you're going for that kind of timbali sound at the edge in, in sort of like a reggae or a dub context, it's really, really nice for that. And at the end of the day, realistically, you don't need a coated batter unless you're playing brushes. Like, that's the only time that it really is going to influence a huge part of your sound. Other than that, it's, it's much more subtle than, than I was expecting, for sure. Now, let's double down. Next up, we're going to a two-ply, Clear G2. Everything else exactly the same. And uh, it's worth noting that I didn't really aim for tuning these heads to the same pitch. I just kind of tuned them so that they sounded good. And all the heads we used today ended up being within a few cents of the same pitch, which just goes to show you that this drum has a happy range with a clear batter head on it that my ear just noticed. And when you know your drum, you're gonna find that out too. You know, you'll, you'll find that range without the aid of any kind of like specific note or any device or anything like that. So this is my, maybe my favorite one of the ones that we did today, just because it has the aspects of the previous thinner head that were really cool and that defined it as being clear, but it's a chunkier sound. This is even louder in front of me at the same kind of like stick velocity. It sits awesome in the mix. And actually, I'm, I'm actually, I'm thinking about changing my drum out for some gigs this weekend to do because it's gonna be super loud, hard hitting stuff. And it just feels awesome to hit. And uh, the tactile sensation of hitting a two-ply clear head on the snare, to me, is actually nicer. It's a little bit of a beefier sound. You really feel like you can play into it. Um, the harder you hit it, the better it sounds, which is uh, a lot of fun, um, no matter what. You know, you might get into trouble if you're not supposed to be playing that loud on the gig. But it's uh, it's inspiring, basically, to just like smash it and, and see how much you can get out of it. Something we also noticed with this head versus the previous one is that when we muted the close mic on the snare and just relied on the sort of overhead or like the room mics, the crack and body and attack of this head was really substantial and you could actually, I mean, this is a great choice for if you have to do minimal miking for a situation because it's throwing the whole sound of the drum much further than a thinner head. Um, as well as sounding great in the close mic. We noticed when we turned off the close mic, the 414 it had it all in it and it sounded phenomenal. Again, as usual, no compression, no EQ, none of that stuff. Just the drum by itself was like, oh, Perfect. Now, if you want to hear some EQ and compression or you want to hear microphone scheme comparisons and also a little more playing, jump over to our Patreon. Link is in the description below. We have all kinds of extra stuff over there. All right, last and certainly not least, we have another two-ply head, which Ben actually happened to come up with when he worked at Evans, which is the Black Chrome. Now, this is an interesting head. It has sort of an interesting mixture of features. It has a seven mil clear top ply, and then the underneath ply, the black ply, is seven and a half mil. And it's a really different sound than the G2. I wasn't expecting that, you know, but the, the subtle comparisons and the subtle things that go on just between two heads that are fundamentally the same in terms of like how many plies it is, is it clear or not, um, it actually makes a big difference. Um, so let's get right to it. Thank you. 
Now this head is really interesting to me compared to the last one. Um, and I've, I mean, as I said, two ply, clear, no coating. The overtone series that's present in the rim shot in particular is really different. And the the sort of volume, like, but the part of the sound that has the most volume in it is a little bit different too. Um, you're gonna experience the same kind of like added durability and the sort of like cushy feel even when it's, you know, kind of up there uh, pitch wise. But it's, a, it's an overall kind of like a zingier character and a little bit of a broader sound just in front of me. In the mics, it's not extremely different than the G2, but the feel is definitely really different and the overall um, most accentuated overtones are a little bit different. One is definitely not better than the other. They are their own things. But I did find myself wanting to kind of like off-center my backbeat to a sec a kind of accentuate those overtones in like, you know, thinking about like Beastie Boys tracks and things like that where things are kind of wild and just over the top. Um, and a lot of people have used these for batter heads. I've seen lots of videos of different guys in the in the realm of gospel chops, in the realm of hip hop and funk music, um, and also in the realm of just really hard hitting things, even some proggy stuff. Um, basically because it, it carries the sound, it carries the tone, and it is durable. You can really thrash on it a lot and it's not gonna give out. The interesting thing about this experiment for me overarching is that it's another reminder that a head that is supposed to be for this or that thing definitely doesn't have to be. If it fits on your drum, see what it does. You know, especially when it comes to batters that you think of as a tom batter or batters you think of as a snare batter, try them somewhere else. I saw somebody, <laughs> I saw somebody with Rezo 7s for batters the other day and they were happy. So who cares? Do whatever makes you happy. Do whatever makes the sound that you like. And above all, remember that this is supposed to be fun. There isn't a right or wrong, but do make sure that you use your ears. And when you're trying out different heads like we were doing today, the ears really came into it because we thought a lot about these sounds and about where we'd heard them before and how we would play if that was the drum that was handed to us, maybe for a track, which is a thing that happens in the studio sometimes. They're like, this is the sound, hit this. and. You better be okay with that, <laughs> even if it's got gaff tape all over it or if it's a clear head or, you know, whatever. So to sum up, clear snare heads are awesome. They're not for everything, but nothing is for everything. You can try whatever you want. I'm definitely gonna try one of these out and, you know, see how much damage I can do because it's just a lot of fun to hit as hard as I can. I'm gonna order some five Bs <laughs> for sure. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and please hit the notification bell down there so that you get our notifications. And if for some reason you're not getting the notifications after you hit that bell, we drop these videos every Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time, like clockwork. So they're there, even if YouTube didn't tell you that they're there. And please let us know below your thoughts, again, about clear snare batters, what you do with them, what you don't do with them, what you like, what you hate, who you've seen playing them. We're always curious. Thanks again to Promark by Dedaria, our presenting sponsor, for helping us out. And uh, yeah, go out there and smash some clear heads, man. <laughs>